<gasps> because I want to take care of the most difficult cases. When I, when I was going to DE, Dr. Sid Williams, the founder of this university, said, bring me your most difficult cases. And I took that to heart. I said, he means that, and I'm going to do that. So that's where I am now. I see the most difficult cases. Dr. Sid also said, I accept all cases, regardless of condition or financial ability. That's my motto in my office. We don't turn anybody away. We want to make sure everybody gets care, not just people who have insurance, not just people who can afford it. Everybody needs care, especially our kids. But so many chiropractors out there, even the ones who claim that they are doing pediatric chiropractic, what they're doing is they're seeing some kids, but mostly adults. And there's nothing wrong with that. We need that kind of chiropractic. But this is our future. If we, don't do, if we don't do this, let me tell you something, nobody else is gonna. Nobody else is gonna see these kids and take care of them that we can, right? Because what we do is so special and so unique and so different. Autism has increased since 2000, 800%. 800%, forget about the reasons why. We can't plug the bucket, right? My job isn't to teach you guys how to plug the bucket because the bucket is, probably unpluggable. What we do to take care of those kids is I need your help. They need your help. One in five children today in the United States has a mental health disorder. One in five. You can build your practice on this, guys. You can build your practice. I don't just have like 20% or 10% kids. I have 50, 60% kids. And a large portion of those kids are the ones who are neurodevelopmentally challenged, who are neurodivergent, as we would call it, right? That's the kind of kid I want to see. But we, they need your help. We need a lot more of people who are willing to take the chance to go in this direction, to take care of the kids who really need our help. Yeah, the kids who ask me our help, and the kids with ear infection need our help, and all those neurotypical kids with these issues, absolutely, they all need our help. But the ones who really need our help, they're the ones whose brains we need us to fix them. Because remember, as a chiropractor, my job, and get this, <coughs> Christian first quarter person, you're not a back doctor. You're not a bone doctor. You are a brain and nerve system specialist. That's what I am. That's what I do. I take care of this. One in six kids in the US now has a developmental disability. One in six. And let me tell you something, guys. This ain't stopping. It's getting worse and worse and worse. As I have gone through practice since 1989 when I graduated from here, since I have gone on in practice, I've seen it get worse and worse and more and more. And now it is like a flood. Every other kid coming in, autism, learning disorders, ADHD, all this, boom, boom, boom. They need us. We're desperate. But if we're not there for them and we don't teach them what chiropractic really is, then we're missing a whole thing. We're missing the whole thing. And what I'm trying to encourage people now with some of my, con my concepts is, there's a new book that just came out, I just love the title, Becoming a Change Maker. I want you guys to become change makers. We, if we don't do it for the kids, I want you to just keep this in your brain. Who is going to? The sense of urgency I want you to have in your brains is if I don't do it, no one else will. And yet there's a lot of chiropractors out there, there's 60, 70,000 chiropractors in the country. But trust me, 99% of them aren't doing, aren't really working with kids. The amount of chiropractors out there really, really, truly working with kids, not just happen to have some kids in their practice, really working for kids is probably less than 10%. So how can chiropractic, pitch chiropractic be disruptive? That's my, my motto in my, in my, my next phase of my career after 33 years of doing this. My next phase is to be disruptive. And it came from this. I went to a CPA conference back in 2018, and Bill Estep was there. You may have heard of him. He created the uh, company called uh, Patient Media. Um, and he said, chiropractic is disruptive. And I liked that. I said, that's really cool. I like that. Chiropractic is disruptive. It, we don't treat people. I don't have treatment rooms. I don't say, let's lie down and treat you. I adjust someone. There's no treatment. I don't use the word. The word treatment is taboo in my office. If it doesn't require a prescription, it's natural, it's safe, and it respects the wisdom of the body. So I said, I was, I'll never forget this, it's one of those kind of moments, I'm sitting with my wife, she's Dr. Lisa, you probably know her, 
human development, clinical psychology. Right? So I'm sitting with my beautiful wife in the seminar. I'm like, Lisa, we got to come up with something called disruptive pediatrics. I like the ring of that. She's like, yeah. And we started writing on like, taking our notes and coming up with some disruptive pediatric ideas. And that's what I'm sharing with you today, is disruptive pediatrics. First is this, kids are not little adults. This was one of Webster's favorite sayings. Kids are not little adults. You don't just take a chiropractic adjustment for an adult and put it like this for a kid. That's not what a pediatric chiropractic adjustment is. A pediatric chiropractic adjustment is as different as Gonstead is to Thompson. They're both great adjustments, but they're both vastly different. And we have to understand that. We have to understand that chiropractic requires us, with kids, to actually work harder. I, one of my interns yesterday was telling me that one of her friends is working in, a, in an office where they don't charge for kids. Now, I'm not going to condemn that and say it's wrong. I have no judgment. I'm a very judgment-free kind of person, so I have no judgment about that. However, I think it's harder to adjust kids than it is to adjust adults, especially the special needs kids. So to not charge for them, I'm like, why would you do that? Why would that? And, and I get the idea. We were trying to give it away. It's a, it's a beautiful concept, but to me, it's self-defeating. Because if I did that in my practice, I wouldn't be able to stay open. Because 50 to 60% of my kids are, are, are my practice as kids, right? It wouldn't make sense. So the way we work in our office financially is we charge by person. I don't care how old or young you are, right? That first individual, we all do, and we do monthly. We don't do insurance. I stopped insurance five or six years ago. So everything is monthly. And we make it very easy and very affordable for everybody to be able to get care no matter what's going on with them. So pediatric chiropractic is a whole different kind of model. This is Dr. Larry Webster, the founder of SPA. Me, back in 1995, adjusting my son, Palmer, who was a month old. It was this very conversation that changed my entire life. Because when I graduated from my university, as much as I really enjoyed pediatrics and really enjoyed uh, hanging out with Dr. Webster, my goal was to go into sports. So I actually got my sports certification, a CCSP. By 1991, two years out of school, I already was, was there. Um, but athletes, nothing against athletes, because I'm an athlete myself, a hockey player. Athletes are smelly, and they complain a lot. And that wasn't really the thing that I was called to do. I thought it was, but it really wasn't. And uh, Webster talked with me after adjusting my son, and he said, Drew, autism. And I'm like, uh, yeah. He said, autism. And I'm like, uh, what about it? You need to study that. You need to be a leader with these kids. And I said, why autism? It's like, this is 1995. You probably weren't even born yet, some of you guys. Um, he said, it's coming up. It's going to be a big thing. I said, what? you mentioned it like in a sentence when I was in school, like six years ago. It's getting bigger. You've got to study it. And he had this effect on me, and I decided to study autism and study really delving into the pediatric chiropractic, and it changed everything. Everything. So I want to be your Larry Webster. I want to change your thinking right now. Because we need your help. They need your help. It's a whole new skill set. Even in 1924, one of the original green books, Chiropractic Hygiene and Pediatrics. So it's almost 100 years ago that we started this conversation, right? It's not just adjusting kids by taking that constant adjustment and adjusting with less force. That's not it. There's so much more to pediatric chiropractic. Number one. Number two, focus on the whole child. We don't just, so many chiropractors, not once again a fault of their own, usually a fault of schooling or other kind of influences, is we focus on problems, right? So you come in with asthma, I'll fix your asthma. You come with autism, no, 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 no. You can't even say you come in with back pain, I'll fix your back pain. What do I really do? What does what a chiropractor really do? We correct subluxations, that's what I do. I don't fix something. So when someone comes in a couple weeks ago and they said to me, can, can you help my, kid, my kid's autism? I said, that's not my job. She said, well, why am I here then? I said, my job is to make his brain and his nerve system be the best it can be. That's my job. Because if I can make his brain work better, then he works better. 
Because a lot of these kids, what's happening, when you talk about these developmental milestone issues, right? A lot of these kids, when they have an issue, the problem is that their chronological age doesn't equal their brain age. I had a little boy yesterday, first visit. Five years old, big kid, he's up to hearing at five years old. Right? Not that I'm particularly tall, but he's still up to hearing at five years old. Big kid, not verbal. I said to the mom, we did all our, our I, I do a lot of functional neurology with Melillo's work and stuff, Dr. Robert Melillo, uh, brain balance uh, book and stuff. And I, I, I said to her, how old is he? She said, fine, like we talked about, yeah. I said, how old is his brain? She said, what do you mean, it's five? I said, no, it's not. I said, his brain might be chronologically five, but neurologically, he's like a year old. My job is what? Raise that brain age. That's the job of It's not pushing on max. Pushing on max is easy, man. Anybody can do it. There's a lot of people out there. You guys have a lot of competition with back pushers. PTs, OTs, massage therapists. There's a lot of people pushing on backs. Go away from that. That's not what we do. What we do is change the brain and nerve system and the way the brain and nerve system functions. <clears throat> the ICPA stands for a salutogenic model. Salutogenesis is the opposite of pathogenesis. Pathogenesis is taking care of a problem. I have this issue, I take care of that issue, and then I'm done, right? You go to a dentist, they have a cavity, you fill the cavity, you're done. That's not chiropractic. Chiropractic is salutogenic, which means every time you get adjusted, you get a little bit healthier. It's like a bank account. I put a little bit of money in every single week, right? And we got our 401ks, right? And we have our IRA investment plans and our simple IRAs and that kind of stuff. And our Roths, we put money every single week, every single week. <clears throat> I'm, telling, I'm telling you guys, just as a, as a tip, start putting money right now. You say, I don't have any money. I'm telling you, put some money away now. Put a buck away a week. Make it a habit every week to put money away into some savings account. You'll be stunned when you're my age, almost 60, how much money you have by putting the money away now. Yeah. But it's the same, that's how health works too. You put deposits in, deposits in, you eat good, you exercise, you get adjusted, it's all like a healthy habit, that's salutogenesis. Chiropractic is a salutogenic model. You could never, ever not need an adjustment to make sure your nervous system is finely tuned. Right, how cool is that? It's not a model of, well let's see, I'll see you three times a week until the pain goes away and then you're done. No, it's, I'll see you, and then I'll keep on seeing you, maybe less and less, but I'll keep on seeing you, because we can add health to your life every single time. What other healthcare practitioner can do that? Nothing that I know of, everybody else is, is focused on the treatment of an issue. We can focus on the improvement of someone's life. That's why what we do is so powerful. Number three, we are patient-centered, not technique-driven. Sometimes kids can't lie face down on your dressing table. Sometimes they can't lie down because lying down will get them scared. Because if you're on the spectrum and you lose vision going face down, you're scared. So they don't want to lose vision. So what do you do? You adjust them right here by the toys. You adjust them like they sit over here on mom or dad's lap. You adjust them anywhere but where you think you have to. Now, yes, in chiropractic school and in clinic, you're probably going to have to put someone face down because that's just how it is done to train you. But I'm just I'm telling you the real world. The real world is I adjust them wherever they want to be adjusted. They want to sit on up. Yes, it is new patient, this fine girl, little boy. He wants to sit half on dad's lap and half on the chair. Fine, I don't care. I said today's first adjustment is going to be an intro adjustment. And I'm not doing anything osseous with him for the first 10 or 12 visits or so. I'm doing network, I'm doing best, I'm doing BGI, I'm doing SOT, I'm doing really, really gentle stuff because I want to introduce his nerve system to what we're doing. To get him ready for the next level. I don't gotta rush in. And now if you're doing insurance, you gotta rush. You know, you got 10 visits. The insurance company said you got 10 visits. I better I bet get some results in 10 visits. You know what my care plan is for these kids on the spectrum? Two or three times a week until I tell you. I have some kids who have been coming to see me two or three times a week for like three, four, five years. You can't do that in insurance-based practice. Not that it's bad to think insurance. I'm not dissing insurance whatsoever. 
I'm just saying it's a different model. Disruptive pediatrics, which I'm introducing to you, a very different model, which I want you guys to really think about. <clears throat> just from where they are. Very brief story. This boy, when he first came in, minimally speaking, only said mom and dad. That was it. He's four years old. In two months, the kid's talking to Blue Street. <laughs> Until he moved away, it was unbelievable watching this kid change. Now, is that normal and typical? No. Do every, does every kid on the spectrum who comes in, who's minimally speaking, talk like that? No, but it happens because we can change their brains. What happened? The brain changed, the brain reconnected. The brain was at a one-year-old level when he first came in, you know he's four here, and in two months, his brain shifted from one years to two years old, to three years old, to four years old. That's what we do, that's the power. And I don't do anything special or different that you guys can't do. Number four is we really, 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 really need to focus on the brain and nerve system. So when you're in clinic and you're talking to your, your patients in outpatient clinic or in student clinic, whatever, folk talk conversations about the brain and nerve system. Just because my hands are on someone's back doesn't mean that's where it ends. And just because someone says, like, I'll adjust someone, and they'll say, is that it? And you'll say, no, that's actually when the adjustment starts. The adjustment starts when I'm done with you. Because when I'm done with you, what happens? The brain and nerve system takes the information and says, oh, oh, this is different, this is new. And what is that? That's neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity is a new and novel input into the nerve system over and over and over again to change the way the nerve system is functioning and processing. That's why character justice is so powerful. That's why functional neur neurology is so powerful because it changes how the brain and nerve system receives and then gives back out, right? The sensory and the motor. But you've got to change this to change this. If you don't change the input, you can't change the output. That's why what we do is so powerful. And if you look at what we do, look at this brain and nerve system. This was a, in 1925, two students at Kirkville College of Osteopathy spent 1,500 hours dissecting every single nerve branch off the brain and nerve system. And this is what it looks like. Like this tree of life, that's what it looks like to me, right? <clears throat> we are brain and nerve system specialists, and I want to get that, really drill that into your, into your, your thought process. <clears throat> Healing takes time, number five. All healing takes time, especially in the neurodiverse population. I am telling you, and I'm telling you that I'm telling you, that these kids are, do not heal the way you and I do, or what we would call a neurotypical kid does. What has been very interesting in my career is to see that these disconnected kids, as we call them, Dr. Malolo from Malolo's book, their subluxations resist correction. A mom yesterday, she had been going to another chiropractor for years. On and off, here and there with her kid who was on the spectrum. <clears throat> and she said to me yesterday, because she just started seeing us uh, after moving here, she said, I don't understand why she has this kind of subluxation pattern. Like my subluxation, her, her own subluxation pattern seems to be improving. Hers isn't improving at the same speed. Why is that? I said, because kids on the spectrum don't have the same nerve systems that we do. And this isn't just you and I just talking as a chiropractor. This is research. I can show you journal article after journal article after journal article that shows that kids on the spectrum, their brains are wired differently. Their brains are, they have functional disconnection syndrome. There's actually a syndrome that, that their brains are disconnected in, in very different ways than our brains are. <clears throat> and they, their amygdalas look different, and the hippocampus look different, and the prefrontal cortex look different, and the cerebellum is not exactly the same. There are mild, minor, but significant changes in their brains. So what do we have to do with neuroplasticity? Is new input. New input. So in other words, let's say we were trying to go in this direction here, right? And this thing is blocking me. Well, you can just stop here and stay here and say, oh, I guess I'm just going to place I can go. Or you can go around. And that's what neuroplasticity does. Neuroplasticity is going around, right? It's saying, okay, I can't take this path, the direct path, but I can take this path, I can make a, a right and then a left, and, then, and I can take a different path. And that's how neuroplasticity changes how the brain and nerve system works. But it changes it through new and novel input. <clears throat> so I teach this. 
right? I teach for the ICPA. If you're interested, this particular weekend, as a matter of fact, I am actually doing a 12-hour live virtual seminar. It was for the West Coast um, people, so it started at 10.30, which is kind of odd. But I'm doing my, I do a 12-hour seminar for the ICPA, uh, which is part of the required uh, certification of course. And I also did a four-hour tongue-tied seminar, which is available as a recording, so if you're interested, you can always click on this. I also spoke recently with Dr. Stephen Porteous. I don't know how many of you have heard of Dr. Stephen Porteous from the polyvagal theory, but he was the founder of the polyvagal theory, and he was so intrigued in some of the stuff that he and I were talking about that he asked me to speak on his platform. So this was he and I speaking back in May, and if you're interested in that, you can click on here. I have a podcast. Uh, it is the longest running podcast in chiropractic. Uh, I just posted my 485th episode. Thank you. Crazy. It, it started because of one of you guys back in 2015 saying, you really should post some of this crazy stuff you say. I'm like, post it where? I'm like, oh, on a podcast. I'm like, what's a podcast? Right? And that's how he showed me how to do it, and that was, that was it. I started doing it. So it's called Chiropast. If you're interested, let me know which you like, if you like it. I'm also a peak doc. Um, when I say I need your help, I mean I need your help. I need great students. Right, we have graduated, this quarter will be my 83rd peak student that I graduated since 2010. We take on three to five peak students every single quarter, uh, and we love training you guys, this is Halloween recently. Um, so we just had to do a great old time, dressing up every, every year we, we do some kind of crazy theme, and we all dressed up as Toy Story uh, this year. Um, but if you're, if you're interested in peak, please email me at drubinatlife.edu. I would love to talk to you about this. I need your help. If, you, if this is the kind of kid you want to see, if this kind of practice you want to have, and you're going to be peaking sometime in the next like year or so, because we train, we, we don't just take you on from 13th quarter. We train you for a year before you even get started. That's how serious we are about this, because I want to make sure you are ready by the time you get into my practice and actually adjusting. You are trained, 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 trained. And then, on, for instance, Dr. Heidi, her first day, she saw 20 people. She adjusted 20 people. Some of you might not adjust 20 people in a whole quarter. Right? She adjusted 20 people her first day, two new patients exams, and she finished off. She's our current record holder. 590 adjustments and 58 exams in, in two quarters of being in my office. And that's in the middle of the pandemic. This is 2020, 2021. Right? So we make sure our peak students get their hands on. So I want some of you guys in my practice. If you're serious about seeing kids, then I'm serious about training you to make sure you're the best. <clears throat> and here's the last of my six things, the disruptive pediatric six, is kids are what they eat, how they move, and what they play. We've got to help them eat better. A lot of these kids, when they're eating stuff, they're eating junk, they're eating mac and cheese, they're eating pizza, they're eating french fries, they're eating chicken nuggets. Now, why do you think they're eating those things? Well, they're picky eaters, yeah, maybe. And it's cheap, yeah, maybe. But there's, there's one very big commonality in those things. Pizza, mac and cheese, chicken nuggets, french fries. Who said easy? Yeah, exactly. They're easy. And not just easy for mom or dad to pick up or caregivers. They're easy for them to chew. They have a texture issue. Right? They're, these kids have unbelievable sensory issues. So to tell them, here, eat an apple, they can't figure that out. But eat a chicken nugget, that's easy. I can put it in my mouth, do nothing, and it melts. Right? That's how it works. Right? And that's what the same thing with pizza, the same thing with french fries. You don't really have to chew much. Because they have all these sensory issues, right? The incoming issues, and then if you have a sensory issue, you can't figure out an apple in your mouth, what happens to the motor? You can't chew, right? So whenever you see a mom or a dad or a caregiver, and you, and you see them with some, a child on the spectrum or a child with some kind of issues, and you see them eating this junk, never get mad and judge that mom or dad or caregiver, because it might be the only thing that they know how to eat, but there's a way to change that, right? And you gotta change what? Their brain. Change the brain, what the brain thinks about these different kind of foods. Make their brain look at it differently. 
right? So if we just say, just eat an apple, it will never work unless you change the brain first and how the brain interprets what that apple is and how the brain interprets how to chew. And this is what we have to learn, right? To me, chiropractic is so, there's such depth to chiropractic that, once again, not bad or wrong, but that a back pain practice doesn't have. And it's, it's important, it's 80% of people with back pain, of course, take care of people with back pain. I, you know, all my adult patients have back pain. Um, but that's not the, but the point, even with a back pain patient, is that we're taking care of their brain. Because even if it might be touching their back, but it's not their back I'm fixing. Right? It's the brain I'm fixing, the way the brain, like if you think about the, the, the mechanical receptors, if I adjust like this, and that mechanical receptor talks to what? Cerebellum, basal ganglia, thalamus, prefrontal cortex, coming back down like this, right? So you have this loop like this, and that's what you're really working on. So when you, when you guys, if you guys are in lower quarters, and you're taking neuroanatomy, pay attention, man, because neuroanatomy is where it's at, right? Spinal anatomy is important, past, you know, important, good for OSCEs and boards. But neuroanatomy, that's, that's where our home is. Our home is really taking care of that. The brain learns by movement. We have to have, we, so many of our kids are stuck on their phones, on their iPads, and they just sit there like Why do you think, okay, here's a, a random question. Why is there so much concussion now? Why are so many kids getting concussions? Yeah, okay, so there's, there's definitely some issues with the prefrontal cortex, but why are there problems with the prefrontal cortex? What are kids doing? If you spend most of your time with your head down, you're going to diminish how your prefrontal cortex works, right? And you're also going to make your neck weaker. So you play football, you wrestle, you play hockey like I did for 40 years, right? All these kind of sports where they used to be able to take those hits easily, now they can't take the hits anymore because they're already weak like this. So you wonder where all these concussions are coming from is because they're not moving. They're sitting in classrooms, right? And they're being asked to sit down and shut up when their bodies want to move, move, move. And then instead of going home and playing outside, what are they doing? Here, take your iPad, here, take your, your Game Boy, take your Nintendo Switch. And then we wonder where all this is coming from. It's pretty obvious what we have done to our kids. And I'm not saying that I can change the kids who want to play Nintendo Switch, but I can change that kid's brain. One child at a time, I can change their brains. One child at a time. That's why I need your help. Because if I think about the 30, 40 of you in this room right now, how many kids can you touch, right? So if I'm touching several hundred a week and you're touching several hundred a week, right? That's thousands, right? And that's how it's gonna change. That's how we make change. One person at a time, one kid at a time, one brain and nerve system at a time. So we have to teach these kids to move. And chiropractic adjustment is movement, right? Because what are we doing? We're moving the bone. And whether we're doing an with the onset adjustment, or we're doing it with a network adjustment, you know, with tonal, or using an activator instrument, or a TRT instrument, we're, no matter what that is, it's a movement. It's a form of movement. That's why it's so important and so good for them. Because we're, we're helping their spine move in a way that it's not used to moving. Like, if you think about how beautiful that is, and the, the full circle of symmetry that we are able to do with chiropractic, it just gives me goosebumps to think of what our potential is. <clears throat> So my suggestion is, let's embrace disruptive chiropractic. You know, I'm asking you for your help. I'm asking you to go out there and say, and you don't have to run out and take ICPA classes. You don't have to do all that kind of stuff. By the way, we teach three pediatric classes here, uh, electives, right? So take those three electives. If you want to really learn about them kids, how to take care of them, I'm gonna teach you everything I know. I'm gonna download my brain into your brains in three quarters. We teach advanced pediatric technique, pediatric health challenges, and advanced pediatric diagnosis. We have more, more electives in this school than any other school in the world for pediatrics. And that was my goal when I got here. That's why they hired me back in 2001. I said, I want to change pediatrics in this, on this campus. And they said, go for it. And it took me years, but I was able to convince them to do it. And now we've been doing it. Because I'm not going to back down. You know the Tom Petty song, I won't back down? <clears throat> Maybe you don't know that song. My generation. <laughs> but I'm not going to back down. 
I'm not gonna back down for those kids, right? I will not stop, I will not give up. I will, I will keep on going no matter what for these kids. I work tirelessly to help these kids and I want to train more warriors. I want to train more, that's why we have, I've had 83 interns, 83 trained warriors go out there into the into practices so that they can, when they graduate, they can have the same kind of pediatric practice and take care of these kind of really challenged kids. Because we've got to protect our future. we got to protect our future. And that's why I'm here, and that's why I talk to this club, and I speak to all the other clubs, and ICPA, and with our portion of the I because we've got to take care of more kids. And I know it's not like a broken record, but that's all I think about. Right? All I think about is, what can I do to reach more? What, what can I do? And, and I know as a person, I am limited to whoever I can physically touch, right? But if I can talk about it, then think about all the thousands of other kids that I am touching now because I talk to you. And how gratifying that is for me, right? 33 years in practice and I still love it. I still can't wait to see tomorrow what fascinating, interesting kid I'm gonna see. And I wanna close with this one <clears throat> quick story about the little one I saw yesterday. And if you were in my classes this morning, you already heard the story, so forgive me. <laughs> but it's very <embarrassing> repeated. <clears throat> so, uh, it's around 3 o'clock, and we just came back from lunch, and I have an open adjusting area, five adjusting bays, uh, with T bars in between each one. And I come out and from the back of the patient exam, and right over there is uh, around the, the bend of one of the T bars, is two of my patients, a mom and her little one. And the, the mom stands up and I say, come on, it's your turn. So the mom comes and stands up and says to her daughter, come on, let's, 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 uh, let's show the doctor what you can do. And this little one is very shy, she's, she's cute as a button. She's four years old, cute as a button, but painfully shy. And she didn't want to show what I was hoping that she was gonna show me. She said, come on, come on, come on, show me. And she didn't do it. So finally the mom picks her up, puts her in the middle of the room. Here's my front desk and here's the front of the T-bar. She puts her like this and she walks away from her. And she says, show Dr. what you can do. And she took steps for the first time in my office by herself. She did the OTs and PTs and everybody's telling her because of this, 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 and this, she ain't gonna walk and this and that. And I watched her walk in my office. Four months after her first adjustment, she's walking. After all the, not that the PT and the OT was bad or wrong, she needs it to strengthen the muscles, absolutely, there's nothing wrong with that. But what does she really need is to get reconnected, right? She was disconnected. By reconnecting this little one, we were able to watch her walk. And I'm like, ah. Like to see that, like wow. The, the power that I know that it was in her, it just had to be released. And it wasn't. And as Beecher says, we, the, the chiropractic doctor releases the prison impulse, right? We release that prison impulse that her brain and her nerve system weren't able to work the way it's supposed to. It was disconnected, as Robert Melillo would say. We were able to reconnect that and watch a miracle happen. And that's what I do all day long is I watch a miracle, and another miracle, and another miracle, and another miracle, and all these beautiful things, and I'm like, why would anybody want to do anything else but this, right? This is like so gratifying. I come home like elated, tired, but elated, because of what I know, that, not that I did, right? It wasn't the Drew Rubin show. It was what they did. But you can do this too, and you need to do this. I, I'm looking for recruits. <laughs> Right? I am like, I'm like the, the person up front saying, we need you. We need you for this battle. Because that's what this is. This is a battle for our kids' health. And any other profession out there isn't going to do what we do. It's really up to you. If you're interested in disruptive pediatrics or in internship in my office, there's my email address. Please let me know if I can serve in any other way. Thank you guys. And now I just want to open up for some questions. But thank you so much for your attention. Questions?